Hi, this is Jerry with I Love RV Life. Today, I have nine tips if you're thinking about buying a new RV. And this is going to be really important if this is going to be your first RV purchase. Well, hi, this is Jerry. Recently, we've been getting a lot of comments on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page about what is the perfect RV to buy? Well, I'll share this with you. There's no such thing. Um, you know, RVs are like a home. It's like a car. It's like so many other personal items. You buy what fits your family and fits your lifestyle. And what's perfect for one group might be totally different from someone else. But what remains true is there are some things that you should strongly consider before you buy an RV. For Joan and I, when we bought our first wheeled wonder, we uh, thought, oh, this is just going to be a perfect world, trouble theory, and we'd never have any issues. And that's just not the way it works. There's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts, a lot of pieces, and guess what? You've heard me say this before in past videos. We pull our wheeled home, our RV, down these bumpy highways and it's like dragging them through an earthquake for miles. So there's things that are going to happen and it's regardless of who the manufacturer is. And I'll share this as well. This is not going to be a slam or a rant piece. There's differences in manufacturers and difference in quality. Uh, less expensive units, they might break a little bit more. But that doesn't necessarily mean that very high price, multi-hundred thousand dollar, whatever, is not going to break as well. So I think these nine tips you'll find very, very helpful. Again, if you're new to RV life, these are things that you should really look at closely. And if you're thinking about buying a new RV, this might be a great refresher for you. Now I'll mention this. At the end of this video, there is a location where you can click on the show notes for this video where I go into greater detail on the ilovervlife.com and it'll take you directly to the blog of something that you can take, print out, look at, and use that during your um, buying consideration. So I hope you find this video helpful. Number one, do your research. The first thing that I would do before I would consider buying any new RV, if I'm looking at a specific model or a specific manufacturer, is just go out on the internet, do a Google search, look at those individual units and find out what might be the fit that I'm looking for. You know, do I need a bunkhouse because I've got little ones? Um, am I looking for a couple's coach that's just for me and the wife uh, for us to be able to do our touring? What type of RV travel are we thinking about? Are we going to go to a specific location and stay parked for a while? Or are we going to be moving every couple days? Do we need to be able to have a vehicle to tour? Or are we going to look at something that's very small that we can do all the harvest host things and we're going to be moving day after day going to different locations? Each one of those specific items, depending on the type of RV lifestyle that you want, will radically radically change the type of fifth wheel that you're looking for. As a for instance, the last thing you want is a 45 foot fifth wheel pulled with a ton truck if you're going to be moving that thing every day or two and you're going to be running through all the vineyards and harvest hosts and the farms and those types of things. But again, if you're planning on taking this you know, to the Arizona desert or you're going to be taking it to the beach in Florida for the winter and parking it for three or four months, then a fifth wheel or something like a large travel trailer might be better suited for you. Go out onto Google, search the different manufacturers, and find out exactly what they might have, and then you can start narrowing down your choices on what might be best for you. Number two, talk to RV owners. Look, RV owners love to talk about their RVs. It doesn't matter what they have, old, new, big, small, expensive, less expensive. We're all going to talk about our RVs and we're going to usually tell you about the likes and dislikes about 
what we like about our RV. If you know somebody that has an RV in your neighborhood or a family member, talk to them. Why do you like that type of RV? And see if that fits your lifestyle. Another thing to consider, go to an RV show. I'm not saying buy at an RV show, but go to an RV show, hang around the booth and the RVs where you're looking at and finding people that are looking at a specific RV. Listen, listen to people when they say, oh, you know, I like this much better than our current Class A, or I like this better than our fifth wheel, or this newer unit has these features that my older unit doesn't have. Another thing about RVers, most, most are very, very friendly. Feel free to walk up and go, I heard you say something about XYZ of this specific model. What do you like about it? I'm thinking about buying one like this too. And these people will flood you with great information. Joan and I went to an RV show in February and we, <laughs> we spent more time talking to folks about their potential RV purchases than we did looking at RVs for ourselves. <laughs> that might be one reason we didn't end up buying a new RV. But people love to share what's out there. Let me share one more tip about talking with other RV owners. YouTube is full of people who have bought an RV and they open up their comment sections. And the other thing that I see so much of is both on our Facebook page at Jerry Love RV Life as well as uh, many of the forums that are out there. Every day, every day somebody posts, I'm thinking about buying an RV. What is the best one to purchase? And you'll get 5,000 comments across the board. It's so much noise that response is absolutely worthless in my opinion. I just, I just can't see how you can weed through all that information. Um, it's better for you to be able to say, look, I have found this specific model by this specific manufacturer. Our family is this and we're thinking about doing the following. This is going to be our style of travel. Does anyone else have this model and how's it working out for you? Now you've refined that question to where you can actually get some good quality information from many of the people who own that model or who might have owned it in the past and may not have had you know, a favorable experience. Narrowing that information down on Facebook and asking a specific question about a specific model will give you so much more value and both those people that are going to respond to you, those RV owners that are out there, as well as being able to kind of, you know, walk through the weeds here and thin out the information and find out what's best for you. Number three, read the manufacturer's forums. Every manufacturer, I don't care who it is out there, if they are of any value, most of them have a manufacturer's page and many of them have a forum. As a, for instance, we have a Heartland Gateway fifth wheel. Now, I'm not saying that's best for us or best for anyone else, but when we were thinking about buying this model, I went out to the forums and I looked to see you know, what people were saying about the specific model. Now, these forums can go back many years, so be cautious about that. Make sure that when you're looking at specific comments, they're not three years old, four years old, or older, five, six, seven, eight years old. Some of these forums can go back a long time. The manufacturer might have had a bump in the road for a bad hot water heater or something was going wrong with the frames or something like that. Go out on those forums, narrow down and look through each one of those and find out exactly what people are saying. Hey, are we having this many troubles about this one specific item? If you see one thing, say last year everybody was having a specific problem about this thing and people were complaining about how hard it was to get it repaired or the manufacturer wasn't responding to it, the interesting Interesting thing about these forums is the, those comments usually do not get deleted out by the manufacturer and I'll tip my hat to them for that. They let people carry on and a lot of times you'll find helpful tips on how things can be simply resolved or what the manufacturer did to fix it and people aren't having that trouble anymore. So those forums are absolutely gold mines if you're thinking about buying a new RV and a specific manufacturer and model. Number four, you bought the new RV 
but don't leave the lot yet. This is really, really important. First of all, congratulations on purchasing your new RV. I know you're excited. When Joan and I bought our new RV, our new fifth wheel, we were just beaming. We could not wait to get it home. But here's the thing that you should do. Before you pull that unit off the lot, make sure that you negotiate with the salesperson that you will have a tech who will take you through every single thing in its operation on your new RV. I don't care what it is. If it's a Class A, a Class C, or a Class B, motorized units, make sure you understand where everything is about the engine and the engine maintenance. Then from there, it starts getting pretty common, regardless of whether it's a motorized unit or a fifth wheel or a pull behind. You want them to turn on every single switch that exists in that RV. I don't care if it's a light, it doesn't matter whether it's slide outs, I don't care what it does. Turn it on and see how it operates with the technician that's there. If there is a valve, have them pull it. Um, if there are water filtration systems, understand how to be able to change out the filters. If you need to winterize your unit and you're in a colder climate, understand which knobs turn in certain ways so that you can winterize that unit and most of all, be able to take it out. Look at your hot water heaters. They are all over the spectrum as far as what's available today from tank types to those that are tankless. So there are so many different items. Understand how your refrigerator works. This is so, so, so very important that you understand every single feature and function that exists on that RV. Now here's two other tips I want you to think about as you're going through this. Take your phone or take a camera and record that technician doing every single thing, every switch, every knob, every valve. I know I'm being repetitious, but every single thing that's out there and film them as you do it. Now what you'll have is a video manual that you can use and that is going to be worth so much, especially for the first dozen times you go out there where is the switch for our tank heaters? That was our biggie. We didn't know. It wasn't marked. It wasn't in our manual. I had to call the manufacturer to find out where my tank switches were for the heater blankets when we went into colder climates. I didn't know how to turn on my awning lights. Very simple things that I thought I had made every single note, but I didn't video everything. Oh. If I would have just videoed that technician going through, it would have been so simple for me to be able to find those little things that aren't quite labeled so well. So that's another tip. Now last on this, if anything doesn't work while you're going through these steps, write them down, let them go ahead and finish everything, go get your salesman, and then take that salesman and say, this is broke and do not pull that thing off the lot. Ask them, when can it be repaired? and how long will it be before you get it back? It's a brand new unit and you've started making payments on it. We had that happen when we bought our fifth wheel. It was simple, but we got it fixed. It took three or four days, then we got our fifth wheel and it was a much better experience because we knew we didn't take it home broken. Very important. Number five, read your manuals for your RV. Okay, I know this goes against the mail honor code of not to read manuals. Do it. Now look, don't just read your manuals once. Read them twice. Become very, very familiar. What you don't want to have happen is you're getting out on the trip. You can't figure out how something operates or something goes wrong and it's you know a reset button or turning a knob or something unique to your RV. And you want to be able just to flip that switch or turn that knob and you know and keep doing what you want to be doing on your RV travel instead of just you know lamenting over this thing not working. Look, when you read that manual, highlight it. Put some notes on the front page so that you can find it quickly so that if something does happen, you know exactly how to you know, push that knob or turn the dial or more importantly, which fuse goes, goes with it. Look, fuses sometimes are not always in the breaker box, breaker panel. Sometimes they're located in other locations. You want me to tell you how I knew that? 
we blew the fuse on our jack system that levels off our fifth wheel. Took me all day to find it. I mean, it was an absolute nightmare. No, the technician didn't show me where it was at. I didn't know to ask. I thought they were all in the fuse panel. Uh, and then I had to dig through manuals over and over and over again, even though I had read them a number of years ago. I didn't make any notes. Found it, replaced the fuse, now the jacks work. So it's those little things that can really wreck a whole day of your first day in your RV travel while you're trying to do something that if you just had your owner's manual read and highlighted and noted, it would make it better. And look, before you pull that RV off the lot, have them show you where the owner manuals are. Pull every single one out. I know this might take 15, 20 minutes, but look, you just spent a lot of money for this RV. Look at every owner's manual, find every single thing it goes to, your TV, your refrigerator, your slide out devices, your water heater, uh, your jack or leveling systems or any of those things, I can go on and on and on. Make sure you have an owner's manual for every single thing that you have in that RV and then go home and read them and then read them again. Number six, test everything before your first trip. Yay, we've got the RV home. It's sitting in the driveway. We're so excited. We're going to plan our first trip. Let me suggest where your first trip should be. That's right, the driveway. In the driveway. You remember that video you took? You remember we read all those owner's manuals? Now it's your turn. Go turn on every knob, flip every switch, see which lights come on. Make sure you understand how the refrigerator works. Last thing you want is the refrigerator not working and you're hundreds of miles from home, right? Go through every single thing in that RV and make sure it works. If it's hot in the summer, make sure, make sure you can turn the AC on. Look, what we did is before we brought our RV home, we had a 50 amp connector put on the outside of our garage. Best money spent, best idea that we ever had because now we can plug the RV in before we leave and hit the road and make sure that everything's going to be working properly. And look, we're going to be gone for two or three months and that way we know we're not going to go out and be stranded with something not working properly. You know, just do those types of things. If it's cold, turn on the heater, make sure it's warm. All those types of things. Check your RV out completely. Hey, guess what? More than likely, your LP tanks are empty when you came from the dealer. You need to go get them filled up so that you can make sure that you're going to have heat, make sure you're going to have cook, if you, you can cook, if you have a stove that requires gas, all these types of things. One other thing that I want you to do now that you've tested everything before you go on your first trip, sleep in it. That's right. Go out there and one night sleep in the thing and make sure that Everything feels good, you know. I'll go ahead and share with you. The first thing that we did after we did that, we got rid of that comforter that came with the, with the unit. Went to Walmart and bought us a new comfortable comforter because the thing scratched our face all night long. We put decent pillows in there, all those types of things. Look, I've even heard some people that just said, we slept on our bed for the first time and the mattress was horrendous. We had to go out and buy a new mattress. Fortunately, we didn't have that happen. But what you don't want to have happen is now you've gone out and you're spending your first month or two and every night you wake up the next morning and you toss and turn in its drudgery because the thing didn't sleep well. So these are the types of things. Live in it a day. Live in it a day or two. Live in it a weekend before you take it out on the first trip. You'll have a better feel for it. You'll be far more confident before you go out on your first trip and then you'll be ready to go. Number seven, don't go crazy buying every RV gadget before your first trip. Look, Joan and I have been you know, doing this RV lifestyle for a long time and we consider ourselves long timers uh, versus full timers or versus weekenders. I mean, we go out sometime for months and months on end and then we'll come home sometimes for a couple weeks or now we're home for the holidays and then we'll go out for months again. So we have bought a lot of stuff, a lot of gadgets. And when we first started, we bought more junk that we never used. Ah, we were excited. We had our new RV. We couldn't wait to get out on the road. I don't 
make the mistake that I have done and Joan have done and many others like us have done. One of the things that I've done, and look, I'm going to put a card up top of where you can go to I Love RV Life and go to our RV accessories page. And I've broke that up into various sections. One thing that I would stress is you're going to need some RV, what I call essential items, before you take your first trip. Sometimes your RV salesman will throw in a couple things. Sometimes not. You just get out there and you don't have a single thing other than a plug to plug it into the RV. These essentials will be those basic items that you will use every single time that you go out on an RV trip. I can, I can assure you, you'll use them every single time. And they're absolutely critical to be able to go out there and use them. Water hoses, sewer hoses, a number of other things that I think are really, really important to be able to have to both make the RV life a little bit more enjoyable and as well as protect your RV. Now, one other thing that you'll see on our RV list, and, and again, I'm not suggesting you go out there and go crazy on this thing. There are other things out there that we put on that list that we use and that we purchase that you might find helpful that you may or may not need in your RV travel. You might want to look at those as well. Now, if you go to the ilovervlife.com website, you'll see today's blog and show notes, and I've listed out all those essential items. Take a look at those and if you're new to RVing or if you're considering buying an RV or you have just purchased your RV and haven't made that first trip, you might want to think about having these things before you go out. So I think those are very, very important. Number eight, it's time for the shakedown trip. Oh, I still remember mine and John's shakedown trip. What's a shakedown trip? Well, that's the first trip that we took in our RV. We only went mm, maybe 80, 90 miles away from our home for the first trip. Uh, and we went to a state campground and we stayed for four days. And um, now we're taking all those things that we've learned and we're making sure that they're going to work every day for us. <laughs> You're not going to believe what happened. So I get up and take my first shower and I flooded the bathroom. That's right. The RV manufacturer neglected to caulk the shower doors. I, I, I kid you not. And uh, water went everywhere. Uh, on the way home, they didn't put clips under the sink in the kitchen and the sink fell out. I mean, I don't care what you look at, there's things that you're not going to know to inspect and things are gonna happen once you go out on the road. As you go out on this shakedown trip, you don't wanna to go too far away from home and you don't wanna stay a long time, but you wanna make sure that you use everything for several days, you know, to some extent. And then if they break, make a note, get home, call your salesperson, call the place where you bought it, and then schedule a time to get your RV repaired under warranty. And let me go ahead and share this with you. Took me a couple weeks to get a slot because we happened to buy ours during a peak season. We bought ours on a Labor Day weekend and they sold a bunch of them and so many of them came back for warranty work. <laughs> guess, guess what? Other people had problems too. And it took a couple weeks to get our slot. And then worse, on top of that, it took a couple weeks to get our unit back. But all the repairs were made and we were happy with it. Last item on this, when you go to pick up that RV after the repairs were made, inspect them. Look, not all RV manufacturers are the same. Not all RV techs, unfortunately, are the same. And make sure they made the repairs in a efficient and proper manner and make sure that they didn't break something else in the process. Yes, yes, we've had that happen too. So just these are the types of things you need to look at. And um, I think after that shakedown cruise of not going too far away, uh, you'll be a lot happier with it once you get that RV back fixed. And now you can take that first long, long trip that you've been waiting to do since you bought your RV. Number nine, let's hit the road but there's a few things you need to know first. All right, we're ready. We're gonna take this RV out for weeks, month, or hoo-hoo, we're full timers and we're gonna go out there and have a 
blast. Our first, first long trip. I still remember mine and Jones. Our first long trip that we took, we did our shakedown. We did one other little short trip just to make sure everything was fixed. And boom, we went out for over three months, went all the way, way out into Texas from Georgia, you know, up through Arkansas, Tennessee. We just had a field day and came home and everything worked out great. What I did not realize is we kind of called that trip, we've got an old blog on this, we called it the shake, rattle, and roll. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize. I didn't realize that the roads were gonna be so bad, what construction was like pulling a fifth wheel, and I think that goes with just about any type of RV. And we broke some things in our trip because a, we didn't have them fastened down properly. We didn't have our shell, you know, our cabinets and the shelving set up the way it should be. Um, I drove a little too fast on this first one in some of the construction areas and put more vibration in that fifth wheel. I didn't realize I should have slowed down so much. Um, and look, I'll go ahead and share this with you. In a construction zone, I don't care if it does say it's 55. Sometimes I slow down to 30 and 35 if it's really beating my RV all the pieces. You know, these are the types of things that you need to be able to consider. Look, take a basic toolkit with you, screwdrivers, a little small drill, a little socket wrench set. Things are going to get loose. Things are going to break. It's just going to happen. It's okay. It's okay. Don't sweat the small stuff. Just fix them and don't let them build up. Usually it's just a tightening a screw or putting the curtains back up where they got shook off the wall. It's those types of things that are going to happen. Don't let it wig you out. It's just called RV travel. And unfortunately, some states have better roads than others. Here's your next RV tip. Look, I've given you the nine when you're considering buying and what to do after you've bought it. This has nothing to do with that. This is dealing with your travels. And I just think I would be remiss for all of you who are going to be new to RVing and kind of setting a mindset on what you should be doing once you hit the road for the first few times. Look, these things are heavy and these things are long. You're not going to zip through a drive-thru, you know, at your local fast food place. You can just forget that. You know, find your Walmart, pull in that, walk across the street, come back if you need, you know, if you need the biscuit and a cup of coffee before you go somewhere. Don't do what we just saw happen last week and a guy was pulling a 45-foot fifth wheel and trying to navigate through a fast food restaurant. It wasn't pretty. So don't, don't even think about doing that. Second, these things, you shouldn't be driving 70 miles an hour down the interstate. Look, we'll be driving down the highway and I'll see people zip by us doing 75, 80 miles an hour and faster. That is a formula for disaster from a number of reasons. Number one, these things weigh thousands and thousands of pounds, far, far more than any car or vehicle that you've been driving up to this point and it takes a long time to stop them. You can't slam on brakes. I kind of give you a case in point. We'd had our RV for less than a year and we were driving down an interstate and there was multiple lanes. We had vehicles on both sides of us and out of the woods came a deer. There was no place for me to go. I hit the brakes, tried to slow down as quickly as possible, hit the deer, unfortunately killed the deer, Joan, I, and our grandchildren were in the truck at the time. We were all safe, but it did something like $9,000 worth of damage to the truck. It was a mess. Road hazard insurance, thank goodness for that. If you don't have it, I would, cons I would consider it. And I'm not going to give you someone that you should use. I've tried them all. They've all got pros and cons. I might have this person this year. If I get aggravated with them, I'll try somebody else. But there's several out there that you might want to consider. And uh, certain ones have different benefits depending on the type of RV that you have. But you might want to consider that. Next, you're going down the highway. I don't care if it says 70 miles an hour. That's too fast. And for most of us who have trailers or fifth wheels, the tires are only rated at 65 miles an hour. These things will explode. And many times these things are not, these tires are not of a quality manufacturer. We call them China bombs. I had them on my fifth wheel. I didn't know it. First one blew up at 3,000 miles and on the same trip, 
3,500 miles later, another one blew up, did a tremendous amount of damage to our fifth wheel. I was driving under 65 miles an hour, thank the Lord for that, and was able to keep control of the fifth wheel when they blew. Took it immediately to a tire dealer to have four brand new tires placed on it at 3,500 miles of my brand new fifth wheel and the other two tires had already separated. They were pure junk. And if I would have been traveling at a high rate of speed, I cannot imagine what would have happened. And you've got to know that trailer tire or that fifth wheel or your class A tire characteristic. Know what speeds they can be safely run on. Look, so you drive 63 miles an hour or you're in a construction zone that says 50, but to be safe, you need to be driving 35. It's okay. It really is, it's okay. So you get to your destination, what, 15, 20 minutes longer than what it would have taken you if you drove the speed limit. You've protected your family, you've protected those that's around you, and you've protected that expensive investment you just made on that RV. And it's just gonna make RV life so, so much better, less stressful, something that you'll enjoy so much more. Well, I hope these tips have helped you. Uh, I still remember when we bought our RV for the first time. Are we in a new market for one? Mm, maybe. We'll see. We've been looking for several months now. I haven't made a decision. But we're going through these steps just like I encourage you to do. And we do this for one specific reason. Of course you know why. It's just because I love RV life.